Hey guys and girls and welcome to a brand new pickup video. Today I have two brand new consoles to show you. Well, I say brand new loosely. Uh, one's a replacement and the other one it is an addition but I've technically got one version of it already. But it doesn't help to have another version as well, doesn't it? Right, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, first machine I've got. I've had the original for... Oh, I say original. <laughs> I've had my original for... God knows how many years and I have been playing import games on it for quite some time but then I decided you know enough's enough I can't be asked to faff around with the conversion cartridge any longer so I went out and bought a Super Famicom oh yes I got this for 20 quid off of eBay which was as far as I'm concerned a really good deal uh, it just came with this on its own it was just the unit alone no cables controllers or anything like that but fortunately you know I've got enough um, I've got enough Nintendo cables to strangle myself with and tie myself up with and god knows what else I don't do that kind of kinky shit by the way <laughs> just putting that out there right now but no no I've got more than enough uh, TV cables to go in the back and um, I, I read Oh, I didn't notice the channel switches, and and I read that uh, you can power this thing with a uh, Mega Drive Mark One power adapter. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing, and obviously I've I've got um, enough um, SNES controllers. So um, yeah, Super Famicom. I was uh, uh, I was going to buy. I was debating on getting the um, the US Super Nintendo. Because at least then, with the Japanese games, I could just, well, so I need to remove the tabs, but I could just slide them straight in. And if I was to get a uh, Super Famicom, then I'd have to uh, take the P BC PCB out of the cartridge slot, or take the shell off the top of the Nintendo, which is uh, a lot more hassle than it's worth, I can tell you that much, because you take the top sh uh, the top half of the shell off, and these are fucking coming with it. And there's the eject mechanism underneath, you know, it's just not worth the hassle. So you probably better off just putting the uh, bare PCB in the top. Or I could just use my conversion cartridge, you know. But it might be a while before I actually get any um, US games for it. However, speaking of games, I did get a handful of um, other games as well. And these... These cost me uh, 20 quid for the four of them. Actually, I think these cost me 20 quid. I think that... I think that may have cost me 15. I'll have to go back at some point. I can't remember. This was dirt cheap. I actually think it may have been 10. Oh no, 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 no. No, I think this actually probably was 20 as well. But whatever. Yeah, I, these I actually won on a bid rather than a buy it now. And it was uh, these four games, unboxed, but you know, the SNES, it's not, um, it's not a console where I'm actually bothered about getting its games. Um, uh, full boxed CIB etc etc you know because the cartridges are fucking beasts as they are so um, yeah in these four cartridges I got Super Mario Collection aka Super Mario All-Stars um, if I remember rightly uh, Super Mario All-Stars and World cartridge wasn't released in Japan so um, I'm glad I got hold of that there's quite a few small differences very small differences, but if you've played enough of All Stars, you will notice um, the differences between that cartridge and this cartridge. So there's that. We also got Super Mario Kart. I already have um, Super Mario Kart for my um, uh, for my SNES. I'm going to refer to that as SNES, and that obviously is the Super Famicom. But yeah, I already got this for my uh, original SNES, but when I played it. The, my SNES's internal fuse blue, and I have not played that copy of Super Mario Kart ever since. This one, on the other hand, has been very, been very, been very kind to the Super Famicom. So um, fingers crossed, it stays that way. And next up, Super Mario Brothers 4: Super Mario World. God damn, I love saying the full title. <laughs> but yeah, once again, I've got this um, for the Super Nintendo but it doesn't hurt to have another copy. The reason why I actually have uh, the Japanese versions, A, I like collecting them anyway, and B, you try playing some of the uh, PAL SNES games on the um, on the Super Famicom, by all, uh, on, on the whole they do work, but some of them can have graphical glitches, like for example Super Mario World, um, I think that, that's got occasional screen flicker in, and that's about it. 
Um, I'm going to know about Super Mario Kart, because like I said, I didn't try it. I haven't got it out of its box ever since it blew my SNES's fuse. Uh, Super Mario All-Stars, um, you get flickering backgrounds on that as well, on Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2. On um, Super Mario Bros. 2 for the West, I'm not going to call it Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. Um, yeah, for Super Mario Bros. 2 for the West, um, it's got this really, really horrible um, background. It's sort of like a spectrum loading screen, but across the entire fucking screen. And Super Mario Bros. 3 seems to work fine. So yeah, you just get those um, little artifacts that happen in the uh, PAL versions on an NTSC machine, so... It is what it is. And the final game is... Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Again, I already have this for the um, for the Super Nintendo, but I don't have a 60 hertz version. That's what we need right there. And plus, I, I I do like Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It's pretty good. Right, so that's uh, that's those games that I actually bought specifically for my Super Famicom, which at the time took my it took my uh, Super Famicom game count up to, I think it was seven, because I had those four. And obviously I got Rockman X, um, Parodius, Bing Bing Bingo, which always makes me smile, <laughs> and uh, Gradius 3. So yeah, that was eight. I'm pretty sure I'm missing one more, but I can't think of it off the top of my head, but whatever. And of course it means I can actually play uh, Rockman X past the first level now. Because if you play that on the uh, Super Nintendo, you ain't getting past the first level. No chance. It warns you that there's a possibility that uh, the cartridge will not work on a PAL console. It lets you get up to the, um, the first level and that's it. It just resets. So you get a sample. <laughs> but that, kind of, that was one of the things that encouraged me to actually get a Super Famicom. Right. Next up, these two games I got separately, and they were actually really good deals considering uh, what game they are, and the condition they're in, and how much they usually go for on eBay. First game is Super Donkey Kong, aka Donkey Kong Country. Now this game, if I remember rightly, this is boxed in good condition, in complete condition, CIB, complete in box or complete uh, cartridge instru instructions and box. Everything's in here. Well, everything that's important anyway. Guess how much this cost? If you guessed five pounds, you were correct. That's how much this cost. I have seen Donkey Kong Country, any kind of version, go for at least 20, 30, sometimes 40 quid on eBay. I got this for a fiver. I left that guy the best feedback ever. Seriously. Well, it could have been a girl. I don't mean to be sexist, but you know, I left them the best feedback ever. I just like, I five starred everything. You know, I gave them their mwah, thumbs up, even though I don't, you can't do it on eBay anyway. <laughs> yeah, I gave, I gave them really positive reviews. And this next one, this one was a little bit more pricey, but compared to how much I've seen it go for, it wasn't too bad. Super Donkey Kong 2, aka Donkey Kong Country 2. Now I've already got this, and um, Donkey Kong Country as well, for the um, Virtual Console. In fact, I actually bought them in a bloody big hurry when uh, Nintendo originally took them off the shopping channel for whatever fucking reason. And this is in even better condition than Donkey Kong Country. This actually cost me 20 quid. And this was a, um, this was, I can't remember, was it about buy it now? I think, I, no, I actually think I sniped this win as well. But yeah, and it comes with the box, obviously. Uh, instruction manual, very, very nice. Uh, cartridge and a really nice cellophane bag, so I appreciate that a lot. Uh, um, a uh, power plug um, a pamphlet. I'm assuming that is, you know, be careful when you're plugging it into your system. Um, and we've got a quick, um, a quick guide card for your yeah, two monkeys and the uh, animal friends, which I think is really cool. I, I assume you get something like that for um, Donkey Kong Country as well. And this was a really interesting um, little addition to it. This is a, uh, well, it's a... Uh, that, that's what it is, that's what came with it. It's a uh, gu gu guide door 
Supuka. Okay, alright, whatever. Super Famicom. Yeah, Famicom. Uh, Ow? Yeah, my Japanese is awful. <laughs> A. Awa. Oh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I th think Satellite Comic. Yeah, it's, it's to, um, I'm assuming it's to promote the, um, the uh, Satellite View that was used briefly for the um, Super Famicom. Yeah, yeah, it's to promote the Satellite View. You can see you've got your, your various little uh, bits and pieces. It's actually quite a funky little comic, actually, if I just turn back a page. It's actually pretty neat. Anyway, yeah, um, that's what I was trying to read earlier. Super Famicom, ah, wah. I think that's wah anyway. Yeah, it looks like wah. Ah, wah. And of course, we've got uh, in the middle here, information of Nintendo hour. You got me? Sorry, guys, I'm still looking at the screen to decide. And that's pretty much it. Well, there, there's a better, there's a better look at it. That's pretty much what this little, uh, this little booklet is. It's just, um, you know, one great big booklet for the Satella view. And I do like here uh, that it says open here as opposed to, well, turn over here. Because obviously this is how the Japanese read normally, this, this way around from right to left. So that's pretty much it as far as uh, the Super Famicom is concerned. Now I do have, obviously, as I said in the beginning of the video, I have one more cartridge to go, one more cartridge, one more console to go. I can't believe it's taken me bloody 10 minutes already. Right, uh, I'll put that down there for a second if I make sure I know which one is which. I sure hope I didn't just give you guys a sneaky preview. <laughs> right. This, it wasn't, I won't say it was dirt cheap, but it wasn't super expensive either, especially considering the uh, condition and everything I got with it as well. A Sega Dreamcast. Oh yeah. This this surprised me when it arrived actually because um, it was uh, um, it was sent by a secure mail if I remember rightly, and uh, you know my postie had arrived in during the day and I thought to myself, okay, well I'm not going to get this today obviously. And then uh, at one point when I went out into the hallway in my house, I saw this uh, giant black thing in our porch door, just through the door in our porch just through the door and I went in there and it was addressed to me and I thought to myself "Ooh, I wonder if it is what I think it is and it was it was my my Sega Dreamcast and some of you guys may be able to tell because it's a white box with orange text if you look at the back you can quite clearly see that it's written in English this is the Asian model very similar to my uh, original Dreamcast which is here. Unfortunately, the uh, the video output is just completely dead on my machine, and I really kind of don't really know what's up with it anymore. But um, yeah, one of the telltale signs is that um, if you look there on the modem, there is no um, phone line socket, and of course on the underneath as well, we've got it written in English there as well. Now a few things about uh, my new Dreamcast, which is right here. I'll just hold the other one up as well, just to make sure. There we go. <laughs> I've got two orange Dreamcasts. And uh, so of course, coupled with this one down here, which you guys can probably just about see. Uh, yeah, a few, a few things I noticed about uh, this Dreamcast when I booted it up. Obviously it booted up into um, the Japanese mode. One of the things I noticed, which was weird, and I didn't clock it at the time, was when I was looking at the um, the seller's page for this. For this, it came with a PAL version of Tokyo Highway Challenge. I thought to myself, why is he giving me a PAL game for a Japanese machine? You guys have probably already figured it out, but I was quite slow, <laughs> and I just dismissed it. I thought to myself, okay, it's just a racing game, which is fine. I I haven't played it before, I don't know if I will. I might get into it, you never know. <coughs> Excuse me. And it didn't twig at the time until I accidentally put a US game in here and it booted it up. I thought to myself, okay, it's weird. Maybe uh, 
uh, the Dreamcast does what um, NTSC um, car, uh, SNES, uh, NTSC um, machines do. You know, like the, the, Nintendo, the Nintendo 64 and the uh, Super Famicom will get there eventually. You know, they're NTSC machines, so they play US and Japanese games. And perhaps maybe I didn't know this, you know, and it was like that all along. But then I thought to myself, hang on, wait a minute, let me put in a PAL game. Guess what happened? It loaded up. This Dreamcast has been modified to be 100% universal. Something the seller did not put on the on the um, on the page. So that was a nice little hidden secret, which I thought, you cheeky little bugger, you never said that at all. Now I understand why this was 40 quid. That's how much it cost me. Box, um, unit obviously, controller, game, and it came with a SCART cable as well, but that SCART cable was such a shit, so I threw it in the bin. I've got enough um, cables for the Dreamcast as well, so it's absolutely fine. But yeah, that was quite a pleasant surprise that this is actually technically modified to be region free. And one thing I also noticed as well is I don't know if this is genuinely um, an Asian model or if it actually is a Japanese model. Because it comes in the Asian model box, but if you look at the bottom here, the sticker at the bottom is written in Japanese. And if you look carefully at the, where is it? Yeah, at the model number. It says there HKT 3000, whereas if you paid attention on the uh, Dreamcast one, uh, on my first Dreamcast, I don't blame you for not doing so, um, HKT 3010, and it's written in English. And the more interesting fact about the box is, if I look at the side here, unfortunately this side turned out to be a bit, um, a bit tatty, which the seller didn't um, uh, include a photo of, but yeah, here we are. If we look at the side here, it says, there we go, HKT, it's not going to focus, but you can just about make it out anyway, HKT 510, yeah. On the whole, I'm not complaining because I have a boxed Dreamcast, and I have a working Dreamcast, and I have a multi-region Dreamcast. <laughs> it even has the um, colour correction mod that you need to do if you're going to make a, uh, uh, a universal Dreamcast. So, uh, yeah guys, that's pretty much all I've got to, to show you for this video. Two brand new consoles. I'm okay with that. Two tums fresh. So, uh, yeah, until next time, take care of yourselves, and thanks for watching.